Hey, what's up? Welcome to another Wizard Food live stream. Today I'm working on rotating the 3D camera. And I'm just going to dive right in until we get some people chatting, and then I'll be chatting and not diving in as much. So, whoa, check, that's too much to see. Way too many icons. Um, check this out. Check this out. My lovely viewer. Hello. Hope you're doing good today. What I've got going so far is being able to rotate the camera. Man, this is exciting. Three-dimensional pixel art. That's what I'm trying to aim at creating here. 3D pixel art. Basically, it's a voxel engine with tiny voxels. So, but when you when you say voxel, usually you think of like Minecraft with huge voxels. This is small voxels. So check it out. I'm here. I'm at this 45 degree angle. I'm gonna rotate the camera one. Now we're back to the regular camera angle. Rotate it one more. Now we're at this other camera angle. Rotate it one more. Oh, we're still at a good camera angle. Rotate one more, and oh, now all of a sudden, all of a sudden, we're doing some weird stuff here. This weird stuff is what we're going to be tackling today on today's live stream. Right now. So, I've actually narrowed down the problem already. I started programming this morning and figured out some things that I was curious about solving last night. Turns out, um, because there's an overworld and an underworld entities with render components in both, um, the actual... The some of the entities in the underworld they had render components, but they didn't have any animations. So when the code tested the render component to see if it had any data, it was returning false and basically not being able to set its visibility flag. And that visibility flag being false caused a whole bunch of other issues. So that's where we're going to start at tackling this problem right now. I'm going to go ahead and just start coding. Um, if I remember correctly, I was trying to rethink the way I set visibility. Visibility is currently set when you set the world Z. Ah, I know what we need to first do. Oops. We need to set world Z. Um, we need a function for setting visibility for an entity. So I think we should have position component is world Z or something like that. Or is visible. That's a great one. Or is the current world? I'm not sure how. To, let's see. Um, it's a bull. Um, is world Z will work? Um, I'm just going to leave that halfway coded there and paste this code that's in the buffer. And in world Z, set world Z takes a, um, a position flag type. That's right. So in position component.h, in this is world z function, we could take a position flag type. And this is a cons method. Gosh, I got way too many files open. Let's close everything. I'm going to restart everything. I always hate having too many windows to tab through. Okay, got this. Let's do a couple things here too. Let's go like this. Restructure this just a little bit. I like, it. I like to make sure my structures are the first thing. And I like to forward declare any enums. Yo, Alessandro! Hello! What's up, man? Bellazio. How you doing today? So I can just forward declare any any um things like enums. Nice to meet you again as well, my friend. You're all great? Good. Same here, man. Doing good. Excited to be making games. Life's good. Life's really good. See, like that? Forward declare that? Yeah. Just traveling around in my van and making this game. Um, got to see a lot of friends lately. That's been real fun. And just establishing a really good workflow. I'm really happy with the progress I, meet, I make. 
I've been setting goals for myself for the game each week. Like I'll set a goal like, hey, I want to get this done by this week. And every week I've hit my goals. So, man, it's just a real good flow. Let's get position component open. Yeah. We'll establish this function here. So all we're doing is checking the position components flags for that that Z level or any, or if it doesn't have any Z component. There we go. So now we can use that in uh, in set world Z. So const bool visible equals e dot position dot is world Z. Yeah, there we go. Cool. And here, so the problem with that, with that render component, is not being visible. Hmm. Oh, oh, it's when the entity is actually set up. It sets visibility. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I got this. So in setup EID, we want to go... Let's say cons bool visible equals e dot position dot is world z for the current world z, which is um, systems get world z. We'll need systems.h included here in this file. And there we go, we got that. This should be a const. And this is z. And then if it has a render component, then we set render.visible to be false. Okay, so I've got two breakpoints. Oops, no. Render.visible is visible. Oh, and we also want to check, we could do this. Basically, we want to make sure that we're checking to see if it's a visible entity before editing the collision system grid or the render system grid. Um, both of these are, these grids are super fast ways for me to look up an entity on the screen. So, um, there's, gosh, there's a lot of trees and there's a lot of rocks in this game. So basically, there's a ton of entities. There's like something like, I think I've got my entity buffer set at like 65,000 entities and all of those are current at the same time. So um, two things needed to be done to get that to run fast enough. First of all, whoa, what, what vision? let's go back to uh, an angle that's going to work. Let's be at that angle for now. So since there's so many entities on the screen, um, uh, I use a, a grid, basically I, gr I grid out the whole screen and um, and list the EIDs that are at certain parts of the grid. So if I want to look up if a, if an entity is at the bottom left of the screen, I can look at zero zero in the grid and see if there's an, any EIDs there. So, so it's a super fast way to look up um, which entities are at which positions. And the render system grid works in two dimensions or with the two dimensional positions and the collision system grid works with three dimensional positions. Okay, I think we've got things in place for fixing this issue. So let's go ahead and start testing whether the issue is fixed now. So we've got two, I had two breakpoints. Let's get rid of all these other breakpoints that I'm not using anymore. I was using these like crazy last night trying to get the camera rotation to work. And it works pretty well now, except for these little issues. So yeah, we want that breakpoint. And yep, this breakpoint too. Okay, so we're gonna watch a particular entity. This entity I happen to know two thousand or twenty one thousand five hundred forty four. This entity is a rock in the underworld, and there was an issue with the render component, and I think I fixed that. The and whether it was the render component was considered active or not. 
And then this other issue is with the grid being edited uh, wrongly because the entity wasn't uh, didn't have its render component. So let's go ahead and check this out. So here we are, and when we're creating the all the entities of the game, we're creating the, an underworld entity. We're creating a rock, and we're getting into the ant create method and ant create with data. So let's go ahead and look at how it creates a render component. I want to check and make sure that this code I wrote for uh, replacing an animation inside. Oops, did I just mess it up? I did. Oh well. Okay, well, we can go ahead and check it on this next method. So let's go step out of that and let's go into setup EID. And now we've got E and render. And because its animations were empty, it should have filled it with at least a tiny animation with just voxel.vox, which is a single voxel. And my whole debugger for maps is messed up right now. I think that might be accurate. Let's go ahead and just step through the code and see if this works. Visible should be false. Visible is true because it doesn't have any position flag. Okay, we found a pretty important issue there. Um, to solve this, what we need to do is pass in any position component flags when we're creating EIDs. That really has to be done because the position component flag has to be set before. I mean, I guess you could put it in the data, but it's, it's no, I just need to do this. Okay, int.h. Yo, virtual exists. What's up, man? Hey, it's been a while since we chatted. I'm working on a new game. This game's called Load Ragger. It's a five on five game. What about you, man? What's up with you? How is everything? Yeah, man. We create. We can also pass in an extra position. Const bits ref extra. Or I'll just call it position flags we can go ahead and recompile that oh yeah yeah I'm trying to stream a little bit earlier today it should be before before sleeping time where you're at right now How's everything going with you, man? Life's good? So we got a bunch of errors because we, we just basically changed int create. Let's go to int.cpp. We want to push in these other two parameters. Pass in some position flags. And then when we set up an EID, we also want to make this function as well, take some position fla flags. And my cursor is moving crazy slow. Uh-oh, what the heck just happened there? Const bits ref position flags. So we've passed that into setup EID, and now we can go ahead and add that. So e.position.flags.set position flags and that will set us up oh we got to do the before we got to set visible we'll set visible to true first studies musical oscilloscope sweet pythons right on musical oscilloscope have you seen um you gotta if you haven't seen you've probably seen this if you're if you're checking out a musical oscilloscope, but I will show you an album. It's one of my favorite albums. Um Oh sweet. I already got his link here. Jared Beam Fenderson. He did this whole album with oscilloscope music. 
And this album, oh, you bought it? Cool. I'm glad you did. I love this album. If anybody else is watching this and you like, uh, you like sort of 8-bit music or like music that sounds like it was generated on an oscilloscope, then you're going to love this album. This is dope. So great. I know. I wish he would write five more albums just like it. He's got a couple more. I haven't. I've got every one of his albums so far. Yeah, it's right. Yeah. Yeah, you can just search for oscilloscope music or um or it's jerobeamfenderson.bandcamp.com. I'll post the link here. You saw it on a real oscilloscope? Oh, I bet that would be awesome. Oh, that's definitely if anybody's interested in this music, the best way to experience Jerobeam Fenderson's music is his like his YouTube videos. Like start there. Go watch his like YouTube video for nuclear white noise it'll blow you away basically it's it's using oscilloscopes to create all these shapes it looks like this one right here where you get all these green lines and black background it uses he uses that to create shapes but those shapes are also actually musical it's pretty rad hey i'm glad we both uh we both enjoyed that album that's sweet All right, so we can just say constable visible true, and if it and then visible equals that. Oh, not cons. Gotta get rid of this. Marza, hey, what's up, brother? How you doing? Welcome. It's been great seeing you guys every like these live streams lately. How you been, Marza? <laughs> What's up, Jib? Jibby. <laughs> Marza powder. <laughs> you guys. Ant create. Where am I? Oh yeah. So systems. We we'll need to change that. Oh yeah, every one of these is gonna need different position flags. So player will need bits none. Um, bot will also need bits none. That means they can go through either of the worlds. But then lane marker, blah blah blah, all these things. These are gonna be team. Wait, no. World Z. Uh, Bits position flags, we'll do C position. Mars a crawler? Where have you been crawling at? You've been crawling the web? You've been crawling under your house? Hey man, you've been baking bread? How's everything going with you? Position flags. Position overworld will be all these overworld entities. So these will all pass in. C position. Oh, I mean uh, position flags. Crawling on the sofa. <laughs> Yeah, you've been making bread and pizza almost every week. Awesome. Yeah. What uh are you using your your recipe, your special recipe? Yeah, cool. Right on. Glad to hear it. So we just pass in all these position flags to all, all these entities. And what this does is it basically just makes every entity be created with the correct position flag and the correct position flag on its on its actual moment of instantaneous creation. It gets the right position flag, which allows it to have the right visibility. So it can edit the render grid or the collision grid correctly. 
So this should be quite a, a good thing to have done. This one is going to be C position underworld. All these will have that. Oops. That's bits, not bit. And that should be it for the bugs. Let's see if we got any more bugs. Or, I mean, compilation errors. Sorry, not bugs. Compilation errors. Yeah, there's one more there. Set up id. Oh, I forgot to forgot to call that correctly. Oh, also input system. Input system is calling create. Oops. Uh, so a weapon. We're gonna need to look up the current Z. Oops. Systems. Get world Z. We're also going to need to probably include systems. Yep. Uh huh. And then pass in just that that Z flag is all we need for that. Oh wait wait wait. There we'll set up some bits like that for Z. Cool. I think that's the only reference to create here. Oh no. We got another one. Oh, creating a building as well as creating a weapon, of course. And we can do the same thing. Just cop get the current Z. Make that a const. Purely for best practices. Anything else? No, we're good. Okay, that's great. And then also set up id. There's one call. There we go. That's the one right there. Position flags passed in. That should be it. Okay. Now we've still got those two breakpoints. Let's make sure they're still on the right lines when I end up editing code in Vim. Sometimes it changes the line that has the right breakpoint. So we got to make sure that's correct. Okay, we got to put that round back there. This one too. Cool. We're ready to go. So we're going to go ahead and test when this entity gets created. This particular entity, 21,544. Entity number 21,544 out of 65,536. We're going to make sure it gets created correctly. With the correct visibility. Really, that's the key. Oops, what do we got here? Oh, AI system as well. Why didn't you tell me? I've noticed that with the current X code, somehow it doesn't output the right errors anymore. At least on when I'm using it via the command line. Do I still got that? Nice. Yes, it's time to eat. It's late there, huh? It's dinner time. Yes, 10 p.m. is definitely dinner time for you guys. You guys love eating late, don't you? Or maybe is that early for you? Oh, you're just lazy today? <laughs> Highly encourage that. I'm hoping to have a nice lazy evening tonight. Being Saturday and all. The eve of Sunday. Sunday, I'm really going to kick back for sure. I promise. I'm promising myself I'm going to relax on Sunday. Take the whole day off. No working whatsoever. No working allowed on Sundays. Yes, thank you. You too. You too, my friend. See you next time, brother. Yeah.
Yes. Commander Klepto in there, too. Yeah. Right on. Love seeing that. Start this step, eh? Oh, we could close. Oh, gosh. This will help speed up my system if I just close that project. Xcode can sometimes be slow. It's going good. Hi to yourself. Hi. It's going great, man. How about you? How about how's it going today? Are you breaking? What's up? It's trying to run. There it goes. My system's a bit slow today. As usual, I need to get a new laptop. Man, I should just I should just fork over the cash and buy a new laptop because damn this thing is old and slow. Okay. On creation of entity twenty one thousand five hundred forty four. Go ahead and step into the render component creation. I don't really need to do this. I already know it's. I already know this is working. Let's step out of this one. We're gonna step into the setup id. Okay, so our Z flag. Yep, it's position overworld. All right, so in this entity you should have position flag underworld, so therefore this visible flag should return false. Let's make sure that happens. That's the, okay, good. We start with true. We set its pause, set its last pause. Okay, we've currently got position flags. What do we got for position flags? We've got, oh, we need to clear all world bits. Or not create them. Probably should not create them in the first place. Rather than clearing them. Because clearing them would imply that you're clearing a certain types of bits when you could have passed them in. So, so this is basically going to set both flags, huh? Yep, we got a one here and a one there. It's basically, now this entity thinks it's in the, the overworld and the underworld. Okay, I think the correct way to handle this is to make sure all the entities that we're creating have, don't have the uh, world bits and we just add those later manually when we're creating them. So tree, we'll start with, oh, you know what? Actually, there's a way easier way to do this. I like using TextMate for this. Mate data. Because TextMate's got a nice find and replace for all files. All right, so we're looking for overworld or underworld in this folder. It's a lot of me. Wow. Okay, let's get all those, turn them into nothing. Replace all. Boom. There, we can leave our flags empty. That's okay. That data will still get loaded correctly. And let's also search for underworld. Good. Okay, and then I'm going to do one more thing to make sure that I don't accidentally fall in my own trap or fall, in, fall into this bug again, I'm going to go ahead and check that before we set these flags, that we don't have any, we should have no C position any world. That's basically both of those bits. So we've changed all the data, we've added this assertion,
now we can go ahead and run an Xcode, and if it does, if it does hit that assertion, we'll know that we've got did something wrong. Oh, whoops. There. Get that on the right line. Oh, we don't need that yet. We need to wait till we're creating the entity. We can turn this one on. Jump forward to there. Okay, cool. We're still creating the right entity. 21544. Set the pause. Assert that it has none of the position any world. Let's step into that. So we're looking at this bits as zero. Great. And make sure we don't have either one of the first two bits. That, of course, should be true. And we pass the assertion. Good. And now we're manually setting that flag. And we should have that now in e.position.flags. And we do. Good. We've got the underworld flag clean and neat and trimmed up. All right. Okay. And then visible should return false. Visible is false. Beautiful. Okay. Now, if it has a render component, that was the that was part of the bug before because the uh, it didn't think it had a render component. Um, Set the visibility flag. If visible, edit the grid, but we're not. So, dude, for the first time in a long time, that's gonna be working. Oh, hopefully, soon. Okay, and if it has a collision, it should. If it's visible, edit the grid. Okay, well, I think we are good to go now. That's great. We've designed a system that should be working well and it's modular as well because we're using reusing the same function rather than writing the same code twice. Sorry, cohesive is the right word for that. Not modular. The opposite of cohesive code is uh, what's the what's the word for it? If anybody can think of this word, you're watching the stream. It's the word for cohesive code is when you have everything has its one place so you can't find the same code in two places spaghetti yes yes spaghetti is a good word for it. i think there's a technical word for it what's up diamond killer by the way how you doing yeah what's the technical term for that where code is in two places at once oh it's called coupling that's what it is it's called coupled code it basically just means that your code is so spaghetti that you've You've written the same exact thing in two places, and then when you when one of your places all of a sudden you maybe you fix that one place and you forget to fix the other place, you still have the bug. You have a crazy bug. You don't know what the heck's going on. So it's just good to get in the habit of writing cohesive code and not writing coupled code. Yeah, I'm good too, man. Life's great. I'm enjoying myself, making this game. Actually, we should be able to go ahead and run now. And it shouldn't have any more of that overflowing the render. Okay, so here we are. Let's rotate the camera. Rotate the camera. I'm just going to rotate the camera a bunch because before what was happening is when I would rotate the camera, it would suddenly scream at me and assert fail that um, there was no more entities or, or no more render grid. See, I don't know what's happening there. Like, I switch to a certain angle, and like all of a sudden, entities aren't on the screen until I stand near them, which is re really weird. Here's another one of those angles. Did the same thing. I wonder if it happens when I okay, wait. When I go back to the 45 degree angle, it's okay. And same here. You know what? I think it's working though. Become a lumberjack, chop down some trees. There's definitely a weird issue with it. See, it didn't draw redraw those entities. 
And when it rotated these models, it left this, there's on the ground, there's some, there's a hole in every one of the ground tiles there, there's a hole. So something needs to be done to fix that. But this is really neat that we can rotate the camera. This is um, some really good progress made here. I'm gonna go ahead and count this as a win and check this code in. Cause before this would have this would have crashed by now. You rotate, I would rotate it like three or four different angles, then all of a sudden it would crash. So I think I've fixed that bug. Okay, that's great. Let's get that checked in. Yeah, it's starting to look starting to look like a game actually. It's you know it's still really rough around the edges. There's a lot of visual glitches and there are none of the beautiful sceneries in there. And there's no great lighting. I want to have really good lighting where entities look like they're on, they're glowing sometimes, and trees just have their beautiful highlights and shadows and dynamic shadows. And um, yeah, it'll eventually look better. Yeah, exactly. Yep, pre, pre, pre alpha. Okay, let's get this code cleaned up and we'll check it in. I'm looking for that, there it is. I don't need that. Where's that other bit of stuff I don't need? Oh, I don't need to look at any of this stuff. There it is, right at the end of, what file is it? Oh, it's systems. Okay, and we're gonna go ahead and do a little code review here. Great, so we're re this is where we, we've written that cohesive code. See how we're using a function there rather than relying on this same logic every time. Uh, okay, and we're passing in position flags whenever we create an entity, which allows us to have the right position flags on the moment of creating the entity Actually, more correctly, when it's setting the id up, the entities, its data is up beyond its beyond its um its uh, data file. Like for example, look, let's look at that file right there, cave.txt. This is its data file, but sometimes an entity might have be like position flags underworld, and sometimes it might be overworld, and that's all done in the code. So basically, yeah. Some of it's loaded from a data file, some of it's dynamic stuff at runtime. Position bits none, bits none. Okay, that stuff, that's, this code right here is not accurate, not fully accurate, right? It shouldn't be, I'm basically, I'm adding a render offset for the camera whenever I change this, the, a, the angle of the camera. I'm setting these some some really random manual angles here, so this needs to be. I need to figure out the math around having the correct render offset, no matter the angle of the Z angle of the camera rotation. Um, for now, I've just basically got it only the 45 degree angles handled, so I'll need to figure out the right math for that. Now, that's actually something I should do next. That should be the next thing I work on today's stream. Okay, we're passing in a Z flag there. We can make that a const and use weapon. This is just an anal thing here. This can going to be a const too. All those can be const. Shoot, that could be const. There we go. Not that important to make all those cons, but it's kind of a best practice thing. And what else? Right. Oh, I hope this. I hope this helps a lot of systems. I think this will really alleviate some some of the pressure that was on the render system and the collision system, having to force it to work in the wait oh you know what we should go ahead oh good we've got oh that was on 
Okay. That is very good to know. Okay, that's a lot of code to check in there. Let's go ahead and check it in two bits. Let's commit the data files and one. Okay. Now we can check in the code bit. So the code, um, fix entities, entity visibility, oh, let's call it, let's, let's word it this way, make entities have the correct position flags on creation. So grid editing. is correct something like that sweet okay man that was a great check-in um so the next things would be to either either to figure out why it's doing that weird let's let's go ahead and run it <laughs> figuring out why it's doing that weird issue where it sometimes doesn't draw it doesn't draw the endies until you're right next to them. I wonder what that is. Oh, I think I know. I think I I think I know, might know what's going on. Okay, so let's start rotating the camera. Let's get to an angle. So now we're, this is a funny angle here. We flipped the whole screen over. Uh-oh, I went into the underworld. Oops. That's a total other thing. I need to make sure that works too. Like. It needs to reset the whole render textures. Okay, what angle is this? See, what is that? Why does it start drawing when the character's up here? Okay. Huh. Okay, so what, let's, let's close everything out again. Open up, um, saves. Oh, we're at Z rotation 180. So we flipped, we're basically what we've done is we flipped the entire arena over and we're viewing the, viewing the camera from the top of the arena downward. Or no, we're at the, we're actually, we're still at the bottom of the arena, but we're viewing it from a... Hmm. I'm trying to understand what the problem is. Hmm. It's also not drawing his bounding box. So weird. Are we even at the right position? Like if I go over here. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can turn into a lumberjack. But why can't I? Okay, I can walk down this way, but I can't see myself. What the hell? What the heck's going on there? My position 2D is zero. Oh. 
Oh. Oh, it would really help if I could see the camera box. Let's take, let's add that to the debug. I'm gonna add that to my debug view. Um, debug entity. It's the camera extent. I think it's called extent. Yeah, okay, so that puts it puts all the corners into Hmm. I think some this would help if I actually do this um, for debugging sake. I can actually store all the wait. It's camera box. Okay, so camera box, and we also would have static camera corners. Okay, so I'm gonna basically store all those so that um, when I'm debugging this code, I can reference that. Great. And so basically what that is, is, is so there's a three-dimensional camera box. And what that is, is it's a, it has a, basically it's, its lower left corner of the box is the bottom left of the arena in 3D. And the, the camera box dot B is the top right of the arena in three dimensions. And then we're calling view project to basically turn that into a two dimensional position. So for example, when the arena is normal, it's just a sort of a rectangle where the player starts his base in the bottom left of that rectangle. Um, and uh, but when you rotate the whole arena by 45 degrees, you've got this whole different situation where the two dimensional extents of the camera are different because the, the, the now the arena is the shape of a diamond and the, the render extent is bigger. Um, so that's what this is. It's figuring out the extent of all four of those corners in two dimensions and then um, expanding a box until it figures out what is the minimum position, what is the maximum position. So what I want to do is add to my debug view these two variables here, the camera box 2D.A and B. And then we can I can get some clues to figure out why. It's because it, I see that it's it's flipped over the camera 180 degrees, but still the 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 I'm not sure what the heck is happening. Let's put it right here. Nah, I guess we can go right at the end before the on screen. Okay, so the camera box 2D. Okay camera box 2d dot a dot x oops all right so this is a dot y and this one is b dot x b dot y okay hopefully this can provide some clues to solving the current conundrum. Can you solve a conundrum? Is that how that works? Uh, 
Okay. So you can see the problem is that I should be able to move downward, but the camera stops moving here. So render position should be way bigger. Oh, so the render offset should be the maximum extent. Oh wow, our camera box 2D has a left corner of negative 1400. What am I hitting here? So what's my render pause? 800. 1500. That's, oh, but, but the pause 2D is zero. Okay. Um, cam box 2D. It's negative 700 to 130. So wait, what's the offset? Oh, we need to see the render offset as well. Render offset 2D dot X. Render offset 2D dot Y. Hopefully that's some enough clues. This is one of those times where the the bug is one of those things I just need to figure out what's the, what exactly is causing this problem. This is this is debugging at its core. Okay, we've got a render offset of 1470, but really the re render offset should be more like 1600. Wait, the whole... T huh. Oh, you know, that works, yeah. Why doesn't, why, oh, oh, the render offset is, the render's offset is only 230. The render offset should be, oh, okay, 230 because it's that plus some. Ah, uh, okay, our render offset should really be more like a thousand more. Because we've got a camera box that stretches down negative 1470, we need our render offset to be, or I mean, no, our render, our camera offset is negative 710. Oh, maybe it has something to do. This is the bug. <laughs> yeah, man, I like this bug. That's a great bug. I'll take that bug any day. Me and that bug would have a good time, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. So let's go ahead and look at when it's setting the render offset. Hopefully we can figure out the right mathematics. Oh, we're at a, we're at 180. Let's go ahead and set a zero for its render offset. Let's see what happens first. All this code right here is janky. This really shouldn't be like this. I need to come up with the right cosine, sine, mathematics to rotate the offset in two dimensions properly. Apply some extra offset. It's like maybe it needs the cam. Oh, maybe it needs the camera in. Okay, what are we, what's going on here? Oh yeah, what? I mean, we're mi where the character is not. I don't know where the character is and all the controls are kind of weird. Uh, huh. if that was negative
This is um this is we've termed this the WTF method. It's basically just taking stabs in the dark until you finally hit something. So okay, the two numbers that I'm really paying attention to here are the cam 2D Y pause, which is currently 13, and the E to R to pause 2D, which is 1000. So subtracting from the entities Oh, maybe the whole problem with this stuff is that um, I shouldn't be editing the render offset. Maybe I should be off editing something else before I edit the render offset. Huh. Like, I guess what I could do is, oh, right. Like if I added something to the camera box, like maybe the cam, see the camera offset is in 3D and then it rotates itself by degrees. Okay, I'm just gonna do something like instinctual here. We've got camera offset, this is in floating point. Okay, so let's make a camera offset 2D. Um, and then we'll go view, project, because we've rotated the camera. So if we can create a 2D position, pause in would be camera offset, pause out would be camera offset 2D. Then what if we went for, what if every one of these had the camera offset 2D, and then we didn't do any of this manually mucking about with the render offset. I have no clue if this will work right, but it seems like this would be the right way to do it. Like applying the camera offset. The camera offset I know is rotating correctly in three dimensions, so maybe this will work. Let's go ahead and let's start, let's start on easy mode here. Let's go to saves.txt and set our rotation back to zero. And we've got a breakpoint already, but we'll run it with Xcode so we can hit that breakpoint whenever we want. I do gotta get going soon, huh? We'll check this, we'll check this out, see what we can figure out, and then I'll get going. Oh, okay, so we've got the the characters right at the bottom of the screen. It, it's, we do still need to edit the, the render. Okay, so our render offset is negative 130 because our cam box is 0, 130. Oh, we do need to set a breakpoint when we expand right here because the camera offset 2D might be it might be it might be adding these together wrong. Oh, or oh, yeah. Let's make sure that's correct first. Okay, so that's in floating point, and then camera corners. Is also floating point. Okay. So we're adding that and that. So gosh, that should be zero and that should be 130. Uh-oh, for real? 
Oh no. Oh, that's because it's all right. Our box here had been minimized first, so this should be, yeah, 0, 130, 2012. Okay, that is adding those together correctly. That's good to know. Okay, so th that's correct. Shoot, so why is it not? I wonder why that didn't work. Well, I guess it was just an extinctual guess. I guess I'll just have to keep guessing at this to figure this out. We'll see what happens if we rotate the camera. Okay, so we've rotated to the 45 degree angle and we're back to not being able to see anything. Oh, we rotate back to zero and we still can't see the player. That's interesting. Here we are at negative 45 degrees, also still cannot see. None of these angles. Okay, I think what's happening is the camera offset's just wrong now. Well, okay, I wasn't able to attain enough clues to figure this out right now, but I've got a good start going. What my goal will be is to get the right, I need to get the right render offset combined with the right camera offset and the correct camera box and all that so that when I rotate the camera, it's got the camera at the perfect offset so that the player is always in the middle of the screen or, or thereabouts. So that's my goal. Um, and I do need to get going. So uh, that's going to be all for this stream. But I uh, hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something. And um, yeah, I'll be back with more videos. My current process right now of game developing this five on five game is I'm I'm doing a lot of the, these uh, um, like 10 minute highlights videos of the development I did for that day. So you can kind of quickly digest what I've been doing for this game. And you can find all that on YouTube on my YouTube channel. YouTube channel name is Natwees. N-A-T-W-E-I-S-S. So that's it for this stream. Thanks for watching. And um, we'll catch you guys next time. Wizafoo, signing out.